Welcome to Episode 6. This time we take you to Sweetwater, Texas and the story of the Women's Auxiliary Service Pilots. Here's your host for this episode, Joe Waverly. 1942. The world was at war. Our country's young men were fighting the wars in the Pacific and Europe. Army Colonel William H. Tunner and civilian pilot Nancy Harkness Love met to begin planning an aviation ferrying program involving women pilots. Colonel Tunner suggested putting women pilots into the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps, popularly known as WAAC. However, there were technical problems with that idea, and so it was decided to hire civilian pilots to fly for the Air Transport Command instead. In June of 1942, Miss Love sent a draft plan to General Harold George, who then forwarded it to General Hap Arnold. Eleanor Roosevelt endorsed the idea. In September, General Arnold ordered that immediate action be taken and the recruiting of women pilots begin within 24 hours. Nancy Harkness Love was to be the director of the group and she sent out 83 telegrams to prospective women pilots that same day. The Women's Auxiliary Ferrying Squadron went into operation publicly on September 10, 1942. Soon the women pilots were ferrying planes from factory to airfield with 28 pilots initially in the program. Requirements for recruits were they had to be between the ages of 21 and 35, have a high school diploma, a commercial flying license, 200 horsepower engine rating, 500 hours of flight time, and experience flying across the country. Pilots in the program had to pay for their own uniforms, though they were issued flight coveralls, goggles, a parachute, flying scarf, and leather flying jacket. WAFS worked under a 90-day renewable contract, earned $250 per month, but had to provide and pay for their own room and board. Also in September of 1942, General Arnold ordered the 319th Women's Flying Training Detachment to be formed under the command of Jacqueline Jackie Cochran, with the goal of training 500 women pilots to ferry aircraft. Both Jackie Cochran and Nancy Love were instrumental in getting the program from plan to reality. Since the WAFS were under the Air Transport Command and the WFTD was under the Flight Training Command, Cochran pushed aggressively to create a single entity to control the activity of all women pilots, and in July 1943, General Arnold ordered the program merged with Cochran as the director. Love continued as executive in charge of ferrying operations. This new program was named Women Air Force Service Pilots, or WASPs for short, and their patch featured a female gremlin called Fifinelia and was drawn by Walt Disney. Fifinelia became the official WASP mascot. Each WASP had a pilot's license, but was retrained to fly the Army way by the U.S. Army Air Forces at Avenger Field in Sweetwater, Texas. Over 25,000 women applied to the program, of which 1,830 were accepted, and of those, only 1,074 completed the training to earn their wings. These were the first women to fly American military aircraft. The WASPs were not trained for combat, but their course of instruction was essentially the same as male aviation cadets and the percentage of those eliminated compared favorably with the elimination rate for male cadets in the Central Flying Training Command. After completing their training, WASP pilots assumed numerous flight duties and relieved male pilots for combat duty. Ferrying aircraft from factory to air bases were one of their primary duties, and over the course of the war, they delivered over 12,000 aircraft of 78 different types. WASP pilots also flew cargo missions and towed targets for live anti-aircraft artillery practice. While towing targets, many of their aircraft were shot and several WASP pilots were wounded. 
WASP pilots flew almost every type of aircraft in the U.S. Army Air Corps inventory, and some were allowed to test rocket and jet-propelled planes. They also flew the new, at that time, B-29 Super Fortress, who many of the male pilots were reluctant to fly. WASP pilots would also test fly aircraft that had been recently repaired. 38 members lost their lives in accidents. 11 died during training and 27 were killed on active duty mission. Because they were not considered part of the military, a fallen WASP was sent home at family expense. Traditional military honors, such as allowing the U.S. flag to be placed on the coffin, were not allowed. The WASP members also did not qualify for military benefits, even though General Arnold went before Congress asking that the WASP become part of the Army Air Force and receive full military status. General Arnold ordered that the WASP be disbanded by December 20, 1944. He is quoted in a speech he delivered at Avenger Field in Sweetwater. The WASP has completed its mission. Their job has been successful. But as is usual in war, the cost has been heavy. Thirty-eight WASPs have died while helping their country move toward the moment of final victory. The Air Forces will long remember their service and their final sacrifice. On December 7, 1944, the final class of WASP pilots, 71 women in total, graduated from their training regardless of the plan to disband the WASP program within the following two weeks. Before the WASP were disbanded, General Arnold ordered that the women pilots be issued a certificate similar to an honorable discharge. WASP members ferry 50% of the combat aircraft during the war to 126 bases across the United States. President Jimmy Carter signed the GI Bill Improvement Act of 1977, providing that service as a WASP would be considered active duty for the purposes of programs administered by the Veterans Administration. Honorable discharge certificates were issued to the former WASP members in 1979. In 1984, each WASP was awarded the World War II Victory Medal. Those who served for more than one year were also awarded American Theater ribbons for their service during the war. Many of the medals were accepted by the recipient's sons and daughters on their behalf. A bipartisan bill to award a Congressional Gold Medal to the Women Air Force Service Pilots WASP, was signed by President Obama in 2009. During the signing, President Obama is quoted as saying, The Women Air Force Service Pilots courageously answered their country's call in a time of need while blazing a trail for the brave women who have given and continue to give so much in service to this nation. The National WASP World War II Museum at Aventure Field in Sweetwater, Texas opened in 2005, 62 years after the first WASP graduating class. The museum is located in a hangar that was built in 1929. Plans are underway to expand the museum with a second hangar and a memorial plaza and expanded exhibits. The museum is open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. and Sunday from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. It is a wonderful way to learn more about these aviation pioneers. We hope you enjoyed this episode of West Texas Then and Now. For more information about the WASP pilots, visit their website at waspmuseum.org. That's waspmuseum.org. For more information about our program, please visit our website at wttn.deepcreeksound.com. That's wttn.deepcreeksound.com. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider giving us a thumbs up and subscribe to our program. 
When you subscribe, click the bell icon to be alerted when new episodes are available. Join us for our next episode of West Texas, then and now.